Hello, y'all. It is Thursday, July 6th. The time is um, 5.07 my time, 6.07 p.m. New York local time. And in this video, we're going to go through and analyze some more of ICT's executions. Um, this is going to be a new series that I'm starting. When he comes out with new executions, I will give you my opinion on them. Uh, tell you what I'm seeing, and I'm also going to go through some of his historical executions. I'm going to have to do a lot of scrolling on his Twitter because there are many. All right. So, um, let's open up with this execution. We're on the. Uh, let's see what date this is from. <clears throat> In a bullish bias, June sixteenth, twenty twenty-three. Buy side draw on liquidity. A weekly volume was, was up there. Uh, at the high, the 1150 to 1210 macro, which is um, a liquidity searching macro. And then discount inverted fair value gap. Uh, so an inverted fair value gap that relative to the dealing range in which he was working at that time. Um, okay. And then obviously uh, trade management, uh, taking parcels out instead of trying to do a full pull. So let's have a watch. Okay. So Higher time frame drawn liquidity in this example was higher. We can see that the first century came in here at this wake inefficiency and this one minute BISI that I'm highlighting with my um, cursor. You can see that the time down below is that 1150 to 1210. So we expect that price is about to um, go seek liquidity. Um, we had just swept into some sell side, uh, sell side liquidity. And so our dealing range would have been <clears throat> in this example from like here to here okay so relative to that we were in discount now the inverted fair value gap he's using it as soon as price trades back into it that is um not something that i've done yet okay i would have seen the the little bissy that was down here okay that we reclaimed that's that's what i would have seen but he's using this sibby right here and saying that it's inverting um which is not something that I have done yet, but I'm obviously happy to do it. So that's the inverted fair value gap model using the SIBI that we just created and then pairing it with uh, the time of the day and our draw on liquidity. So let's continue the video and I really wish it would stop. <clears throat> okay. So we can see that he entered in on that macro. Um, we can see that this SIBI immediately, right, price trades back to it and then immediately inverts it. So um, that's what he was looking for there. Now, I tell you, I would have seen this as a wick inefficiency. Uh, that's what I would have seen. But obviously, relative to our, dis our dealing range here from point A, where my cursor is, to point B, we were in a deep discount at that time where he entered. You can also see that he's entering using multiple entries instead of taking all of his contracts at one time. So that is something to be aware of. All right, we're trading higher. And he hasn't moved the stop loss yet. So price, this is called spooling. What is spooling? Spooling is when price is going to rapidly reprice to its higher time frame draw on liquidity. That could be an inefficiency. Um, it could also be uh, a liquidity target. So these are what we call buy programs or buy scripts. They're spooling higher and there's no amount of selling that's going to stop it from doing that. The pricing engine is repricing to uh, to a pool of liquidity or to a higher time frame inefficiency. So that's this is what spooling looks like. You can see that no matter no matter how many times it flashes a black candle it's not going down. That's because it's spooling to liquidity. Okay, so we're, all right. So something that he just showed there, which is not something that he's necessarily talked about, but look. Yeah, look at that, that's pretty crazy, huh? He's using his order block for, look at that, look at that. Yes, so his order block is his uh, measured move, uh, standard deviation projection using an order block. I'm not sure if he's actually taught that yet or not, uh, and I've watched most of his stuff, believe me. So, look at that. You see, he, he takes the order block from high to low there, and then we have our standard deviation projections higher. Isn't that pretty cool? So, order block is here. Now, I wouldn't have called that an order block because it wasn't paired with an inefficiency. So I, But I see the idea there. I definitely see it. 
So that black candle right there, that would be your order block, and he's taking a measured move of that. So the mean threshold of that order block right there, price should react off that if it gets there. You see that when price is spooling, when price is going for liquidity, nothing's stopping it. Okay. And there's the first, uh, the first few contracts are off. First 15 contracts are off there at how many points was that? It was 10 points. Okay. We're still spooling higher to our daily buy side liquidity. So we're looking at our higher time frame draw on liquidity we're, when we're keeping an eye on that. Okay. And you can see that he's layering out his contracts because as good as you are, you know, you can't always be sure exactly where price is going to stop and turn. So we layer in, we take parcels off for risk management purposes. Okay, now a lot of people are going to think that price is going to turn here. We haven't, price has not, price has not reached its objective. So you see how price is making you think, oh, that might be a double top or whatever, but it's not. It's going to that daily, it's going to the higher time frame draw. That's what it's doing. So it's spooling right now. Um, it's waiting. We're in a buy program. Okay, and then you see the parcels are coming off as we get closer to the draw on liquidity. And that's objective reach. So now he's only got one contract or two contracts left. And he's moved up his break even stop here to this order block. Uh, he used the order block for standard deviation projection. And you can see that it went up three to three to four standard deviation projections, which we know. Uh, we can do with the breaker blocks and the breaker blocks are a type of order block so that's cool that might be something that I have to add in the arsenal now I would not have seen this as an order block because it didn't create a fair value gap so I mean I see it now obviously uh, but I don't think that was the cleanest order block uh, that the Lord has given to man Okay, so we'll see if he ends up getting stopped out on the last two contracts price might still be spooling higher and now we see that uh, the buy stop has been moved up. He's locking in that profit for risk management. It's only got two contracts off left as the uncertainty grows. Okay. So we can see there was our daily high, right? So a prior daily high was, we know that there's going to be buy side liquidity up there that, that the algorithm is spooling. Okay, it's spooling to the higher time frame liquidity. So the pricing engine wants to get the hedge funds, pension funds, it wants to get the, the client's money. So it's spooling higher to go grab that higher time frame liquidity, go sweep it. Let's see if he gets stopped out on this. We swept it, now let's see if we run it higher. And all the way back from this order block, you can use your standard deviation projections to get an idea. I've never used uh, STD projections off of an order block. It's got one contract left all the way up there at that weekly volume imbalance. So we had a higher time frame liquidity draw and we had a higher time frame inefficiency draw at this point. He's only got one contract left just to see if price wants to get all the way up to that higher time frame inefficiency. That's also tugging on price to go higher. Even if it doesn't get there, it's still tugging on price and he stopped out. So that is that one watched um, and analyzed. Let's see if we want to grab one more. Let's analyze. Okay. So we look at this chart here and yeah, I got messed up on that. So that was London Silver Bullet, I'm going to assume. And look, daily relative equal high. So we had a daily uh, liquidity draw and price ended up repricing to that. And it started with London. That's what he's showing here. That was uh, actually, a, I, I was trading that and I did not see what it was doing there and uh, I missed the draw on liquidity. At that point it was higher. So I missed something there. Uh, that was a BISI. So we see a BISI there that Price used as um, support. So you can see that BISI in that, in that blue box and Price never trades below it. Trades into it, uses it as support and that was your launching point from three to four. That was your London accumulation there to go spool higher and go attack um, buy side liquidity. So that was that.
All right, let's see this chart. So we have a BISI here and we have a SIBI here. And we can see that price uses this inefficiency here as support right there on the BISI low. So that would be a common gap. And then price comes and trades up through the SIBI and could invert that. And if the draw on liquidity is higher, it's going to invert it and trade higher. Okay. All right. Um, let's do, I might say this, my voice is getting a little tired. Y'all want another analysis? Let's do it. Okay, let's do one more. That's music. Okay, guys, we are on the E mini NASDAQ 100 future September contract. This is a one minute chart. We have an opening range gap above. We're on rating, regular trading hours below. Let's just restart the video. Okay, so. Opening range gap is sitting above price in this example. In the E-mini NASDAQ September contract, one minute chart. We're currently sitting between 10.50 and 11 a.m. So we know that we're in the regular trading hours. We're in the New York a.m. session. Draw on liquidity could be up to that uh, opening range gap. That would be my first thought. Now he's about to click the buy market. Let's take a look. Trading into a SIBI here that I'm assuming he's going to say is going to invert. Now that could be a breakaway gap right there. See how price trades only a wick into it? That could be a breakaway gap. He's long here. Let's see. So draw liquidity is, ah, propulsion block. So propulsion block is something that he taught um, in his core content in order block theory. And it's, it's when, it's when um, a block is formed that kind of trades back into an already bullish block. I don't know. Um, you need to go, I'll, I'll, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take the propulsion block video from his core content and I'm going to link it in the top comment. I don't fully understand propulsion block myself, but it's basically like, see how there's a bullish order block right there? Then you see how price makes another bullish order block that trades into the bullish order block and the drawn liquidity is higher? Propulsion block. Okay, so this is Wednesday's opening range gap low. So we just delivered a higher time frame draw on liquidity, and that's the key. That is a key. Inverted fair value gap there. So we have a SIBI that price should trade back into and then um, use as support. Undelivered portion of the un. Okay, so that short term buy. So your first target, right? Let's say that you're down here at 15,069 evens. First target's going to be just that very first short term liquidity. Easy peasy, 30 points, right? $600 on contract. But your higher time frame draw on liquidity uh, is going to be that opening range gap, the undelivered portion of it. Okay. Inverted fair value gap. So this is a low, a high, and a lower low that swept into liquidity. You can see that here with my cursor. That's why he's calling that point A to point B. That's why it's a bullish breaker. And if you take point A here, where my cursor is, to point B, and then you project that higher, that's a uh, standard deviation projection higher. So we're inside the bullish breaker. Now, look, he's about to do it. You see how one standard deviation is right above? So we have a, we have, um, a low, high, low that pushes into liquidity. That's, that's key. So you see how he says sell side liquidity purged? What he's saying there is that price is swept. In other words, it's swept into that sell side liquidity. It tapped that liquidity pool where the sell stops would be. And now we have a bullish breaker. So we take point A to point B and point C. Now this right here, this leg down is time distortion. It's manipulation. It's not um, the key aspect. It's not the key leg. It's, it's think of it as time distortion. Okay, it's um, delivering price into sell side liquidity. The key is point A to point B. That's the measured move higher. So look, you see how we go from point A to point B and then he measures that higher? One standard deviation confirms the nearest liquidity target. So we have a lot of models that are saying, um, 
a lot of models in this example saying that we're going to go higher. Okay, look. There it is. So we took out our short-term liquidity. Okay, why is he saying that's optimal to remain unfilled here? Advanced gap theory. So breakaway gap, measuring gap, and then standard deviation much higher. Advanced gap theory. Okay. So we've taken parcels off for risk management. Now he's at a break-even stop, so we're playing with house money here. Ideal to see that measuring gap remain open. Okay, again, notice smooth highs will be made jagged. So one of the things that like quickly you can get your eyes on is that do we have equal highs? If so, that could be a good draw on liquidity, a good liquidity target. Okay, price is coming up to his next partial. Look at that. So he's he's identifying a busy there. That should be short-term support. Ideal if, if that remains open as well. Okay, first parcel is going to come off. So he's taking some off. So look, typically it creates a sudden spike higher on a single or small number of candlesticks. So that's that cathartic push into liquidity. That's that cathartic push I've talked about before at the end of a move, at that swing terminus. See that? That's pushing into stops. Okay, pushing into stops. That's what that was right there. Okay, so now his risk is way lower. He's only got three contracts now on. So look, you just delivered a higher time frame target, or you traded back into a higher time frame important level. At this point, you know, price could could start to come back down. So he's he's got three contracts on and he's playing with house money. So look at that. There's our order block right there. It's not perfect because you can see that it didn't form an inefficiency along with it. Well, kind of, I guess. Not an ideal order block in my opinion. Inverted fair value gap right there. That busy right there is inverting and price is still spooling higher. So now he doesn't want to see that price goes below that inverted fair value gap and it does and he's out. Okay. And also you see that 25% of the opening range gap. He didn't want to see it get down below that inverted fair value gap. So now he's flat. Note the rejection at the 25 quadrant level. So you can see that he's using macro model, breaker block model, propulsion block model. Um, he also used advanced gap theory model. So that's a measuring gap model and then inverted fair value gap model. So that was two ICT trade examples analyzed. Uh, my name is Reese. I'm happy to be here with you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if Michael, for some reason, ever finds my content, um, I'm all the credit goes to Michael Huddleston, guys. It's not me. That was not my video. I cannot trade like that yet. Um, but I'm working on it and making a sincere effort to understand his models. So with that being said, uh, out of respect for him, I'm going to link to his Twitter video uh, in, in the comment box. Okay, guys, that's been more ICT executions analyzed. This is going to be a continuing series. I'm going to try and get through a lot of his um, execution videos and in real time commentate and tell you the models that we're looking at. Bye.